Jay Smith always wanted to be a cattle rancher, and Cheyenne Smith had a lifelong passion for riding horses. Over 15 years ago, the two met in Salmon, and together, they realized their dreams on the J. Lazy S. Angus Ranch. We started from scratch, and, and we couldn't have done it without the right partnership. It was an adventure for me, and, um, and it meant that I could ride horses a lot, so it was a, it was a good fit. Even though Jay grew up in a family with ties to ranching in Carmen Creek, he wasn't in line to inherit a ranch. So he studied business and agriculture at the University of Idaho and went to work for Carl Tyler Chevrolet. Jay put himself through college as an auto mechanic. Cheyenne, a native of Roundup, Montana, studied art and visual communications at a college in Colorado, but she started her own construction business after finishing school. By the time the two met, Jay was already starting a small-scale cattle operation in the Carmen Creek Valley. Jay took Cheyenne for a long horseback ride to see the Salmon River country from high above the valley. He put her on a good riding horse that an experienced rider like Cheyenne could enjoy. The horse thing cinched it. They got married in 2005, but then they needed to buy a ranch, expand the operation. For most people in their late 20s and early 30s, you can't go out and buy a ranch. It's way too expensive, multi-millions. But Jay and Cheyenne were passionate about their dream. Suddenly, it all fell into place. This guy that had this ranch needed it paid. And so that was, it just was like fate. It was almost like meeting Jay, it just happened. We came down here, he did the hay. He said, don't you guys have a ranch? And we said, no. And he, just decided that we needed to have this ranch. And so it was a matter of figuring out how we were gonna pay for it still, but sure. he really wanted us to have the ranch. Jay and Cheyenne bought the ranch in 2006. They registered their brand as the Jay Lazy S Angus Ranch. They built up their cattle operation to the point where they run about 160 head of leased cattle and about 160 head of registered Angus cattle on private and leased land. The Smiths also run cattle on the BLM Badger Springs allotment to the east of their ranch, BLM Range in the Salmon River Bottoms, and on the Diamond Moose allotment, high above in the Salmon Chalice National Forest to the west. Jay and Cheyenne love their life on the ranch. First and foremost, it's how I always wanted to raise my family. Wide open spaces and a work ethic and a care for your animals, you know, chores, I was raised this way, I wanted that for my children. Jay and Cheyenne have two daughters, Karma, 12, and Clara, nine. I love all of it, I love the whole package. I like being able to be way outside in the wilderness and the trees with the cattle and the riding. I like watching the crops grow, the hay, I like raising the horses, the puppies, the chickens, the cats, it's just, um, it's all pretty nice. An overarching theme that permeates the J. Lazy S. Angus Ranch operation is to always strive to make things better. I love a continual challenge. And in the cattle business, you can always make your cattle better, you can always make your range better, you can always make your crops better. There's, the challenges are never done. You can, you can go as deep into the science and as hard into the work as you want, and there's more than you can handle again tomorrow. And I always, I enjoy that. You know, I like to have a challenge in front of me every day. The Life on the Range video crew followed the Smith family for a year to learn about animal husbandry, range stewardship, water conservation, and wolves. In the process, we saw how Jay and Cheyenne's ties to their family, friends, and community all contribute to the overall success of a family business. Let's tag along with the Smith family on their daily adventure of raising cattle in one of the most beautiful places on earth, Salmon, Idaho. Come January, it's time for calving to begin. Mother cows give birth on a daily basis, starting in early January and continuing through March. Truly, this is the beginning of starting a new fiscal cycle, of starting a new life cycle, of a sense of renewness for the ranch. 
Every day, the Smiths keep watch over all of the new calves that are born, with some extra labor for a 24-7 operation over two months. They constantly check the newborn calves to ensure the birth goes well and that they start nursing as soon as they're able. After that shock of coming out of such a warm environment to a cooler environment, um, it gives them the immunity they need for all the things that they're going to be faced with, and um, it just jump starts their whole system. It's, uh, it's, it's critical. Sometimes Jay and Cheyenne have to graft a calf to a different mother cow. Jay ties the legs of a mother cow around the post in the barn so she can't reject the calf, and Cheyenne does the rest, helping the orphaned calf bond to its new mother and drink mother's milk. After each calf is born, the Smiths weigh the calf and give it an inoculation of vitamins. They keep records on each calf's birth date, weight, its actual genetic information, its sire, and pedigree. During calving season, keeping watch over the cattle at all times is paramount. You know, every time you get up to make a check on the cows, you're, that's running through your mind. You know, what, what am I going to find that's not right? What am I looking for? How do I make it right when I, when I find it? We have a far uh, tighter, closer relationship with our veterinarian than we do our family medical doctor. That guy's on speed dial. It's the last weekend in March and friends and family come to the J Lazy S Ranch to help brand cattle. Friends help rope the calves for branding and family members pitch in to help handle the calves. The first step is to separate the calves from the mother cows. Jay gets a hot fire going to get the branding irons ready. Riders take turns roping the calves and helpers wrestle the calves to the ground for branding. Branding is the oldest and still the truest form of permanent identification for a ranch. There is a state brand department that watches for theft, but really and honestly, it's mostly used amongst friends and neighbors. When we come off a commingled range where four or five of us run on one range, uh, we sort each other's cattle as we come off, and we use those identification marks more for ourselves than for any other range. Jay's younger brother Chris and niece Katie are quite the team, wrestling the calves to the ground like pros. This has always been a tradition for me. Um, like I said, it's been a few years since I've done branding, but uh, something I've done ever since I've been growing up. And I grew up coming down to salmon from northern Idaho just to be part of this branding since I was as little as these kids. With remember. your parents and stuff? Yeah. Yep. yep, I was born when we were living here, so this has always felt like home to me, and especially at branding. It's just Chris is a policeman for the Lewiston Police Department, and Katie works for an organization that supports Christian missionaries, but they love to come help on the ranch whenever possible. Yeah, it's kind of hit and miss. Uh, Spring turnout <laughs> or summer range. Yeah, bringing cows in for the fall and everything can. The team branded the Smith's least commercial cattle with an LT brand and then they're registered Angus cattle with the J Lazy S brand. Jay Smith keeps a keen watch over each animal during the process for quality control. You know, one of the things I do is make sure these cattle are just right at all times. I want them handled properly. I want injections done correctly. Um, and it's all for quality assurance. Make sure those animals make the best live animals they can and that they make the best beef product in the end. If you handle them correctly, all things go well. Correct. The Smiths fed everyone a big pot roast for lunch for helping them out. We have really great friends, neighbors, family. We have really great community. Yeah, you almost have to be careful not to tell too many people, otherwise you'd have about 200 people here. Because it's everybody, everybody in the community likes to come help each other brand. The next step, after branding, is the Smiths separate their cattle into groups in preparation for breeding. Five bulls are released into their herd of leased cattle to work on impregnating 100 cows over a 45-day period. Each mother cow comes into heat every 21 days, even while they're nursing their calves. 
For their registered Angus cattle, they set up a special portable shelter for doing artificial insemination work to breed ideal characteristics into the mother cows. Jay Smith spends hours on the computer researching the best traits in registered Angus bulls to mix into his cattle herd and purchases the semen on the open market. Always trying to create the ideal cow. In early May, it's time to turn out the leased cattle to a spring BLM grazing allotment next to the Salmon River. At daybreak, Jay and Cheyenne round up 80 cow-calf pairs and four bulls in a private land pasture in a matter of minutes. Then the Smiths trail the cattle along busy US-93 with a great support crew. Bill Slavin, who leases his cattle to the Smiths, helps keep the animals going in the right direction on a motorcycle, heading off any stragglers. Spring turnout day, so we uh, gathered the cattle about 6 o'clock this morning because we had to do about three miles of US Highway 93, so we got up and going early so we could beat the traffic. Went really smooth kids and neighbors and friends pitched in and helped out. And so we've off the highway and we've come about four miles north on the other side of the river and we've got about two miles to go to our turnout spot. Onto a little strip of BLM for a couple of weeks and then we start climbing the mountain onto the forest first of June. The Smiths girls Karma and Clara enjoyed the ride. Clara rides Clover and Karma rides Badger. How did you like the ride? It was fun. The cars bother you? No, not a bit. This is a mixed emotion day. Uh, we're always happy to be done feeding hay for the season. We're always glad to get the cows on green grass. We love the range. We love what that means as far as uh, utilizing a renewable resource that cannot be utilized in any other way. But we know we're going to have predator issues. It's just a matter of how severe, when and where. The Smiths run their cattle on the Diamond Moose allotment in the Salmon Chalice National Forest in the summer. The Diamond Moose has a history of chronic wolf depredation on livestock. The Smiths always hope for the best, but they know that wolves are in the neighborhood. They also have had some issues with people in the forest. We've had some animals shot in the past, mostly People just disturb them, running them around with ATVs and stuff like that. The, the wolves are the issue. That's what actually cost us in the end. We had a, a good year last year, minimal loss. Um, we had a pretty heavy loss two years ago. So it's, it's so random. I wish, I wish I knew. In early June, it's time to trail the cattle from the Salmon River to Summer Range, a beautiful patch of mountains and succulent meadows in the Diamond Moose allotment. As always, the Smiths recruit friends and family for a long, day-long ride to the high country. They start by crossing the Salmon River on horseback to gather 80 mother cows and their calves, 160 Angus cattle. Jay Smith explains the day's challenges. It's just a long trail, it's a long ridge up to the top of the mountain. There's no good places to stop, corral, hold cattle, or else they'll end up back at the bottom. So you're committed to a long day. After they gather all the cows, they push them up an open ridge and up, up, up toward tree line. The Smiths know the mountain like the back of their hand. They hit small springs along the way for the cattle and horses to drink. Jim Smith and Alvin hit the top first with their group of cattle. Jay and Cheyenne's crew arrived moments later with the main group of cattle. Everyone is tired after more than eight hours in the saddle. Clara collapses in her mother's arms. It's time for a cold drink and a much deserved rest. The cattle have abundant fresh green grass to eat up here. They load the horses into the trailers and head for the Smith cabin a few miles ahead. Everyone looks forward to a hearty steak dinner tonight. Jim Smith bought an old mining claim years ago and built the cabin in the middle of a mountain paradise. 
this is a special place up here for a lot of reasons, but it's a really special place to be a hub, but be a center for our summer cow operation. I've ridden up here. Uh, my grandfather and great grandfather ran cattle on this mountain pre Taylor grazing, so my family's been a part of this mountain always. And so it's, it's always had a special place in my heart to run cattle and be part of this Moose Creek Diamond Moose Grazing Association has just always been in my blood. For Cheyenne, the trip involves a lot of advanced planning and logistics. My biggest preparation is just stressing out for, for a week just to get myself hyped up. We have to make a list of all the food that we want and make sure that we have all the right clothes because you never know what the weather's going to be like once you get up here and make sure everybody's tax in working order and that we have enough horses for everybody. And, um, and then inevitably we always forget something, like we forgot butter, so we have to do without butter for two days, but um, making sure that the kids have all the clothes and, and have a good time. Snack food's probably the most important, make sure we can fit all the snack food in our saddlebags. I know that of all the time people come and do it with us, this is probably their favorite thing to come do. Jim and Sue Smith make a big breakfast for the group the next morning. The plan is to move the cattle through a series of green meadows today. The objective is for the cows to put on weight every day. But because of the topography and the elevation gain, as you can see, we're always moving to green feed. We have a, a two and a half pound average daily gain is our minimum requirement. They'll gain real well up here. The Smiths drive the cattle over to a steep creek crossing. The cattle and the horses are sure-footed in the steep country. The Smiths will keep tabs on the cattle for the next five months, keeping them on the move in the summer range. That's one of Cheyenne's favorite things to do. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous everywhere here. And um, it doesn't matter where I'm riding with the cows. I just, I feel just free, just unattached. All your worries kind of just get wiped away and you can focus on what you're doing. It, it's very rewarding and very freeing. Sue Smith loves being up at her cabin in the mountains. She's been coming up there since she was a little kid, more than 65 years. Sue and Jim Smith ride the cattle during the summer months to keep them on the move and protect them from predators. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. It's the freedom horseback, a good horse, and beautiful country, and, and just the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> just the opportunity to spend solitude, quiet time with my Lord and Savior. It's perfect for me. Ron Johnson enjoys helping out. He lives next door to the Smiths. Well, I've, I've spent, you know, a big part of my life out in the wilderness, and uh, I love being in the mountains. And it's no different. This is, uh, you know, to, to have the cooking over the fire and, and to just be out in the wilderness in the fresh air. And, um, there's nothing better, you know, there's absolutely nothing better than spending that, you know. And the food tastes better, everything's better. Friendships are good, talks are good around the fire. The Smiths are great people, he says. It's absolutely amazing. You know, their heart and their house is open instantly, you know, just at the time that they meet you and then they, they their house is just open to you, you know, and uh, it's just the way they are. It's really cool. Meanwhile, back at the J. Lazy S. Ranch. While the cattle are out on summer range, Jay and Cheyenne tend to chores around the ranch. A big one is to cut hay in the pastures. Jay has been working on boosting the yield of the hay fields with an innovative irrigation system. We actually had our best hay crop ever this year, and there was a couple factors to that. We had a really wet June, so moisture played a good role in that. And the other factor is just we're always improving. We soil sample every year, and we do nutrient management based on what those soil samples tell us. Um, we moisture probe so that we put on the proper amount of water without overwatering. There's just a few steps we take every year to maximize production and minimize input costs. The Smiths also have made improvements to their irrigation system to improve conditions for salmon and steelhead in Carmen Creek. This was a long-term project with multiple partner agencies. 
The concept was to change the point of diversion from Carmen Creek to a Salmon River Canal to leave more water in the stream for fish. Smith worked with the Governor's Office of Species Conservation in Salmon to generate cost share funds for the conservation project. It took five years of meetings to put the complex project together. It's been really good. We had a three-year contract with NRCS where we metered every drop of water that we used so that we could prove that we were staying within the amount of water that we transferred. We soil sampled for three years to make sure that we weren't putting nitrates into the soil. And now there is an extra, a little over two CFS in the bottom of Carmen Creek in the critical time of year. Yeah, it was a great win-win. We got a good system that works well for us and our crops and, uh, and the fish have some water spawn. In the fall, the Smiths grazed their registered Angus cattle on the Badger Springs allotment just up the hill to the east of their home ranch. It's a beautiful area with the Beaverhead Mountains in the background. Tom McFarland, who ranches in the Upper Carmen Creek area, was involved in developing a grazing management system in the Badger Springs allotment with the assistance from the NRCS and BLM in the late 1990s. With solar hot wire fencing, more than four miles of water pipelines and seven water troughs, they divided the allotment into a three-pasture rest rotation system. The new system would spread out the cattle on the range, protect natural water sources, and allow the plants to thrive during non-use periods. We saw a huge change in, in the volume of, of native materials that we had to graze. They would all get a break at least every other year. It was, it was really significant. Our calves put on more weight. We sell more pounds in the fall. Plant communities and the overall rain conditions, uh, range conditions have significantly improved. Indeed, range monitoring data from Tom's son, Seth McFarland, have shown an improving range trend over time. The Badger Springs allotment is one of Jay Smith's favorite spots. I grew up uh, just on the other side of this ridge and I've known this piece of ground my whole life and about 20 years ago <clears throat> this has always been a good piece of range and we decided let's make it better. With this system and with the deferred rotation in the early spring we've made a huge amount of difference in this low country. It's got perennial grasses, it's got blue bunch, needle and thread, we got all the desired species are here, you know, and it's also a sign of good management. Jay and Cheyenne Smith cleaned out the upper story of the red barn so they could host a big 50th wedding anniversary party for Jay's parents, Jim and Sue. They invited friends and family to come and lots of people showed up. They hired a band to play country western music, and Jim and Sue had a wonderful time dancing to just about every tune. Dancing is one of their favorite things to do. It's a close-knit community here, but it sounds silly to say, but when they ask for something, because they never ask for anything, we try so hard to do it, because they give us so much. It's our family is community-oriented, and I, I think that's been ingrained in us throughout history. Uh, your, your neighbors are your source of recreation, they're your friends, they're your co-workers. Kids go to school together, we see each other at the grocery store, uh, or at church, or whatever, you run into these people and so it's real natural when there's a community event for it to be well attended by a wide variety of people. Come November, Jay and Cheyenne are ready to ship cattle to the market. The calves are fattened up and looking great. Jay and Cheyenne keep detailed records as the calves grow throughout the year. Right before shipping, they weigh the calves to make sure they're on target for the contract they've signed with the buyer. They are shipping a mix of heifer calves and steer calves tomorrow. They are expecting all of the calves to meet minimum weights, if not exceed them. Early the next day, the Smiths round up the calves, load them into stock trailers, and drop them off in a corral where they can be weighed by the cattle buyer broker at the Carmen Creek Scales. 
Fresh snow fell overnight, making for a wintry-like scene for shipping cattle. It's a critical time of year for the Smiths, as this is when they get paid for a year's worth of work. All of the care that they put into their animals contributes to the payday. The animals looked really good, and is what matters more to me than that is they looked good to the buyers. We brought a few extras here so they'd have room to sort, and they looked good enough that they took them all above and beyond the contract. Can't do better than that. Overall, Jay is happy with how things turned out this year. Fortunately, they had almost no death loss to predators and wolves. If you consider price and death loss and all things considered, this has been a good, um, slightly above average year. The Smiths signed a contract to lock in the price earlier in the summer, so they knew what to expect, and they budgeted for the outcome. Now, they can take a little bit of a breather before calving starts in January. They'll go to the Lemhi County Cattlemen's Annual Meeting, a festive affair, and then the Idaho Cattle Association Annual Meeting in Sun Valley. Jay is an officer on the ICA board, and then they'll enjoy a vacation in Arizona with the kids. The kids are excited. The kids have never been on an airplane before, so we are going to go somewhere warm and spend a few days and celebrate a good year and buckle down and do it again. The Smiths work hard to raise quality animals and make things better in all aspects of their business and operation. My great-grandfather bought these ranches on Carmen Creek in 1924, and our whole philosophy is sustainability. We wouldn't have lasted this long if we didn't care for our resources and care for our cattle and make sustainability a number one priority. Ultimately, Jay points out that running a ranch is a business and he stays focused on a sustainable budget and producing the best quality cattle possible. To help stay on budget, Cheyenne drives a school bus for the kids' charter school. Jay does extra mechanic work, sells a round hay bale system, and manages the bull sale for Ledor Angus. All of their hard work ensures that they can raise their daughters on a ranch, a lifestyle the girls enjoy. Clara is nine years old now, in fourth grade. She talks about what she likes to do on the ranch. Riding the horses, fishing the cattle. I like feeding the horses, feeding the cows grain. I like to go on with my dad on the four-wheeler and feed the cows hay and go with my mom and horses. Also, my favorite part is when I go in the horse's pen. Like, I was teaching my cousin how to ride my horse. His name's C. And he was really a My horse is really nice. And when I was doing it, I learned how to gallop. Clara likes playing with the chickens, too. So whenever this one chicken, I get near to it, it'll huddle down and I get to pick it up. Once I let chickens in the house, Karma is 12 and she's in seventh grade. She likes riding horses with Clara. They often ride in the back 40. We make a big loop. The chickens always follow me because I give them food and the lambs chase us up trees. Karma also likes to crochet and she's a budding artist. She likes to draw colorful dragons. Ultimately, the Smiths want people to learn about ranching, raising animals, and ranch life. This livestock deal has gotten to where it's not optional to tell your story. You know, there's, there's fewer and fewer of us all the time, and there's more and more people that don't understand what we're doing and how we're raising a healthy, nutritious food source sustainably and responsibly. And if we don't tell our story, who's going to? We, we really, truly believe that this life and this lifestyle is a gift and it's not ours uh, to covet and withhold, it's ours to share. So that's it's definitely Shia and I's philosophy.